We have a scripture this morning. It comes from the Gospel of Matthew. It's Jesus speaking to us today, and Jesus really challenges us to consider what God is wanting to do in and through you and me. Here are these words of life meant for us today. So Jesus says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers from his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why, are you, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. And he said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When the evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. Those, these who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you've made them equal to us who have been born or who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give them the one who has... I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I'm generous? So the last will be first, the first will be last. And so the kingdom of heaven is like this. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, this is a continuation. Actually, the last week in the message series for this month titled Jesus Speaks, and the idea behind the message series has been, been really simple. I, I have discovered that as I read the words of Christ that often I expect to know before I even read them what Jesus is going to say. It's like I can predict Jesus' personality, Jesus' messages, I kind of, in my mind, already know the kind of person Jesus must be, so I already expect to be able to predict what he's going to say even before I read his words. But when I read his words and really listen to Jesus, I'm usually surprised by the things he says to me. So you're getting to overhear, in a lot of ways, a conversation between God and me. And this week I want to talk about something that's related to this, this parable today from Jesus, this story of Jesus's, and I want to talk about fair pay. Fair pay. Uh, yesterday was September 23rd. You heard Greg mentioning that there was this prediction of the end of the world. I had someone at the soccer game last night, my daughter's soccer game, come up to me and say, Mike, are you worried about things happening today? I said, um, well, I mean, it's just a girl's soccer game. What, what do you think is going to happen here? They said, no, about the prediction of the end of the world. And I said, Oh, no, I'm not, not worried at all about that. What I'm most worried about is my brother's birthday was September 20th. It was yesterday, and he turned 45. I can't believe I'm old enough to have a brother who's 45. I feel much older. That was the cataclysmic event for me, was recognizing how old the two of us are getting. I know that that sounds ridiculous, but I wasn't worried at all about the cataclysmic events. Uh, I was, so I was kind of, I thought it was kind of funny. I was thinking about how, and it made me think about when my brother and I were growing up, how when we were little boys, oftentimes I thought that my brother got more than I did. He's younger than me. And it seemed like he could put on a sad face. He could wish for a little bit more and he would get something better. And I always said to my parents, that's not fair. That is not fair that Steve gets something better than I do. When I was his age, I didn't get to do that. I'm older, I should get to stay up later. Why does he get to stay up as late as me? That's not fair that he doesn't have to finish his green beans and I have to finish mine. He only had two and we don't even know where they went. By the way, we found my brother's green beans one day underneath the table and napkins that he had hid in this little corner of the table. I mean, I'm serious. Like years later, we found it when we were cleaning the table and there, it's not fair, right? 
You know, fortunately, we've evolved as human beings, and my kids who are teenagers never complain about us treating one of them unfairly or the other one too fairly. You know, that doesn't, that doesn't happen anymore, does it? Um, fairness. We look for fairness in our life. And oftentimes, we don't hold ourselves to a, a godly standard of fairness. In fact, sometimes we wonder where God is and why God isn't being more fair to us. The, one of the songs we sang just a few moments ago is one of the most meaningful songs to me personally. I didn't remember that, that we were gonna be singing it today. Uh, the song, It Is Well, is a song that I remember from my teenage life when a, a really dear friend of mine named Matt went off to college and, and died while he was playing flag football. He had a congenital heart defect that wasn't diagnosed, and, and he just, just died. I grew up with him. I knew him my whole life. We were great friends. As we sang that song today, I was reminded of his funeral when we sang that song and how that song just, just played over and over in my head as I stood next to his grave on this beautiful September day uh, around the same time as today, in fact. And I was looking up at the clouds, bl beautiful blue Missouri sky, white clouds just passing through a wonderful, beautiful day. And I was standing there thinking to myself, this is not fair. As we sang that song, I thought, wow, you know, it is well with my soul is tough to sing when it doesn't seem like things are fair. I wanna say to you today that there's something here in, in these verses from Jesus that you and I need desperately. And maybe one of the things, one of the ideas I have will connect with you too. The first idea this morning is this, that I think we all want to be paid fairly. Whether it's at work or with our parents or for our kids, we want them to treat us fairly or we want God to, to give us what we believe is right. We all want to be paid fairly. I bet you can relate to an image like this because sometimes we're the first one to mom and dad and say, oh, I don't want to bother you by asking for too much, so I'll just take the little ice pop. And then the other one comes along, the other sister, and she said, I would like two scoops of ice cream. And we're just looking at that ice cream thinking, that's not fair. I was being nice to the parents and they, what happened here? I'm stunned at how at any age, five years old, 105 years old, we all react the same way when we don't think something's fair. We all react the same way. We react with a kind of envy and frustration and righteous indignation. It must not be about being mature. It must be about something else. Sometimes we want to be treated fairly. You always, we want what's fair to us. Second idea is this. When Jesus, the second idea is what Jesus says just doesn't seem fair, does it? So again, the story is really simple. A guy who owns a, a lot of vines, he's a farmer, he needs help. So he goes to the town square where there are lots of people waiting to be hired. You know, today there are places like that. You can drive to different parts of our city and find laborers, workers standing on street corners waiting to be hired. I remember when I lived in Washington, D.C., driving through a neighborhood uh, early in the morning at different times and seeing large groups of workers waiting to be hired. And literally, vans would drive up, painters, construction workers, all different kinds of landscaping, all different kinds of folks looking for day laborers. Guys would get in the truck and off they went. We've been doing this for thousands of years like this. So anyway, these guys are standing around the town square, Jesus says. They're just looking for work. The, the farmer says, hey, I need some help with my vines. How about you guys come on over? Early in the morning, they get out there and start working. Throughout the day, the farmer keeps going back, getting workers, saying to each of them, you know, the first ones were told what they get paid, but after that, it's apparently just come on, I'm gonna get you, I'll pay you fairly. End of the day, though, the guys who are only there one hour, they get the same pay as the guy that worked all day. 
And when the guy that worked all day is standing at the back of the line watching the same money getting passed out to everybody, he's thinking to himself, I've been extra good. I worked harder than everybody else. I didn't complain. I did more than everybody else did. I bet I'm going to get more. They get up to the line, and these last workers, they say, these last workers only worked one hour, and you paid them equal to us. You can hear them say what we said as kids, right? That's not fair. That's not fair. Here's the real kicker. This entire scripture begins with Jesus saying, the kingdom of heaven is like this. Wait a minute, Jesus. What do you mean the kingdom of heaven is like this? It's bad enough when work is like this. It's bad enough when my parents treat me like this. It's bad enough when my kids treat me like this. It's bad enough when my neighbors treat me like this. You say this is what the kingdom of heaven is like? And this is where we all say, that's not fair. That's not fair, God. What's he meaning here? What's he meaning? See, some of us, maybe all of us, we tend to evaluate everyone else, right? Now, I've evaluated all of you. I spent time before a service doing it. And some of you I consider to be my equals. You see what I'm getting at here? This is the idea Jesus is using here. He's saying when it comes to the kingdom of heaven, things aren't quite like we think they should be. But it turns out we're not in charge. So when we hear Jesus speak, sometimes Jesus says things that are hard to hear and understand. Sometimes, in this instance, Jesus says something that doesn't seem fair and right. The third idea is this, that our concern is based on what we think is deserved. Isn't that true? Well, we deserve more because we're better. Because we've evaluated everybody in the whole world, all 7 billion of us in all the different countries, over 200 countries, and we're pretty sure we've got a good idea who's best. And we haven't even gotten to different kinds of churches yet. We're just talking about people in the world. And we haven't gotten to our neighborhood yet because there are definitely some people in our neighborhood you know, some better than others, right? If you were the realtor, wouldn't you have moved some people to a different neighborhood? <laughs> this week, two days ago, I was sitting at this game next to uh, some friends of ours, and they said, hey, there's a new, there's a home that's for sale in our neighborhood, or at least it will be soon. We could use some good neighbors. You guys mind moving in? The whole idea was this. Well, we've, we've evaluated you, and they've known me for many years. I've been their daughter's softball coach since she was in, first grade, and my daughter's known her since kindergarten, so we've known each other a long time, and they've evaluated my wife and me and the two kids, and they've discer discerned that we would not be a bad addition to the neighborhood. You see how, you, how this works? We think we can figure out what we deserve, so we can kind of work things to our advantage, because you never know who's going to move in to that house, so my friend said. By the way, it makes me think about when my family moved into our house eight years ago, you know, the, the neighbors watch. It's raining that day. It was actually January. It was raining, as I recall. And the movers are moving in, everything. And I know the neighbors are watching out their window wondering, all right, what are we getting? What are we getting here in this house? So then they come over. Hey, how you doing? What do you do for a living? Exactly. You know, the house, I remember one family. You know, the house before, man, this family was fun. I mean, there was always a party in this house. I could just watch the shoulders deflate as I explained to them what I did for a living. Oh, my gosh. Did they deserve this? That's what they wondered at the time. Oh, what do we do to deserve the pastor in the neighborhood? Uh-huh. Let me tell you, the fun level went down quick in our neighborhood. Why do we, why do we think that G, what Jesus says why do we think it's tough to hear unfair? Because we're discovering, we're discerning in our mind what we think we deserve. I mean, don't we, you know, don't we have in our mind a sense that we can discern what's fair and right? Can we do that when it comes to what God does? Can we discern what we deserve and then tell God what we deserve? Are we capable 
of standing eye to eye with the divine, the creator of all that is, and say to the only God that is, I'll tell you, God, what's fair and right. Standing next to my childhood friend's grave, I wasn't sure how to explain what was fair or right or good. I actually remember thinking to myself, I don't know how this could have happened. But I thought, I've really got to do something with my life. What about you? Do you sometimes say to God, this is not what I deserve? The fourth idea is this, that Jesus' concern is based on God's generous nature. Maybe this is where we can find comfort and hope, is that there is one who is creating all that is, the maker of heaven and earth, who at God's very nature has a generous heart. This generous heart is meant to give to us something we desperately need. The very grace that leads us towards heaven, to be a part of the kingdom of heaven. I mean, Jesus says it, something like this in the scripture. He says, he asked the question, are you envious because I'm generous? Now, as a kid, I could, I could relate to this. You know, the, the landowner says to the the first, one of the first guys hired, hey, why are you generous? I'm already envious because I'm generous. What, what's the envy about? You're getting what you asked for, what I promised to you. Sometimes I, I do think that I misunderstand God's generosity. And I wonder if maybe some people are getting more than they should. Or maybe I'm just not getting enough of whatever I believe I should get. So how is it for you? Are you comfortable with a great and loving God with a generous heart giving anyone who lives on this earth the same grace and blessings that you get? Well, at least to the last idea. That is that Jesus says God's eternal grace is offered and needed by everyone. There are a lot of ways to take Jesus' parable, in fact, all of his parables, There's a lot of ways to take this parable and shape it for a context, a circumstance, a a time in our lives. What I want to suggest to you today is this. When Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like this, what he's suggesting is that God's grace is being offered to people who are born into the church and live their whole lives faithful to God. And and Jesus is saying the kingdom of heaven is for that person that has been the worst person in the world for their whole life and at their last moment chooses to say yes to God. That the kingdom of heaven is meant to be for those neighbors, those coworkers who we are praying will never show up at this church. There are people like that, aren't there? I mean, really, when you pick your neighbors in church, you know, the person sitting next to you, the person sitting around you, don't you hope for some things and not for other things, Right? Like, one of you hopes I won't mention that you're a Cubs fan again ever again. You're like, please, God, don't mention that I'm a Cubs fan ever again. He embarrasses me every time. And I just saw that Cubs fan walk in the door, which is why I did it again for fun. So, But God's a good at grace, and hopefully so is that Cubs fan. Um, Jesus says this in the scripture. It's really the landowner, but I really think that this is a way for us to hear God speak to us. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? What belongs to God? God's love, God's grace, God's creative energy to make into us what we are meant to be, to make into the world a good creation. The kingdom of heaven and eternal inheritance that begins in this world. Isn't it? Isn't it God's prerogative? Isn't it God's right to call you and me out of our comfort zones to be generous to a fault in order to help win over that one who needs the saving grace that we find at this church? Isn't it our responsibility to move beyond what makes us comfortable and reach out to that one who we are very uncomfortable with and show them God's love and forgiveness and grace 
just as God has done the same for us. My prayer for you and me is that as we think about fair pay, we think about how Christ has paid everything for us and then offered to us a life we could not have otherwise as citizens of an eternal kingdom. And all God asks of us is that we imitate Christ's love and grace and sacrifice. Will you pray with me? Help us today, God, to receive your grace, but to realize that everyone we live next to, walk next to, eat lunch next to, everyone we see on TV, is created by you and in need of the same grace. May we offer to others that loving compassion and message of salvation that you've offered to us. In Christ's name, amen.